Welcome back. Now let's take a look at question number 36. And 36 says, what is the lowest positive integer that is divisible by each of the integers 1 through 7 inclusive? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And they're saying, they're asking, what is the lowest positive integer that is divisible by each of these numbers? Well, what we want to do here is figure out what the, uh, what the prime factors are of each of these numbers. We have 2 and 2 and 2 and 3 um, and remove any duplicates. So if something's going to be divisible by 6, it's got to be divisible by 2 and 3. We already have 2 and 3 here, so this, this 6 here is really just not doing anything. You know, it's sort of a duplicate. Let's, let's get rid of it. Same here. You know, to be divisible by 4, you need to be divisible by 2 twos. We already have a 2 here, so let's uh, get rid of one of these 2s. And uh, we don't really need the 1 either because anything everything can be divisible by 1. So um, let's take our remaining numbers here and multiply them all together. 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 times 5 times 7. It's 12, times 5 is 60, times 7 is 420. 420 is answer choice A. 37 says 1 over 0 0.75 minus 1 equal what? Well, right away, 0 0.75 minus 1, what is that? That is the same as saying negative 1.00 plus 0 0.75. And uh, the answer is going to be negative 0 0.25. Um, up here, the 1 is the same as saying 1.00, so let's just divide, uh, and we'll have 0 0.25, 1.00. We move the decimal point over two spaces, and 25 goes into 100 four times. And so the answer is going to be negative 4, and that is answer choice. Thirty-eight. If one point five over zero point two plus x is five, then x equal what? First thing to do: cross multiply. One point five equals five times zero point two plus x. One point five equal. Let's see. Five times zero point two. That's just one plus. 5x, subtract the 1 from both sides to get 0 0.5 equals 5x, and then divide both sides by 5, those cancel out, x equals 0 0.1. And that is answer choice B. Alright, 39, this one has a graph, so I'm going to draw it real quickly. You got the y here. Oh, that worked out okay. And then two, three, and two. And then they have a point down here called P. And they have a point uh, here called Q. And they tell us that it's three comma two. And then there's a line that goes through like this, it connects the two. And the question says, in the figure above, the point on segment PQ that is, that is twice as far from P as from Q is what? And they give you the uh, five answer choices. Um, let's take a look at this. It says the po we're looking for the point on this line that is twice as far from P as from Q. Okay. See, that's there, and then we have a point here, and we're going to look for a point that is two times, the distance between that point and Q is going to be, um, well, let me put it this way. So there will be a point, and uh, the distance between that point and P is going to be twice as long as that point and Q. 
And so that's why I think it's going to be here, because that is equal to that, and it's also equal to the distance here. There's two of them here, and there's one here. So that would be x would be 2 here, and the y would be 1. So the answer is 2 comma 1, and that is answer choice B. All right, number 40. If n is an integer, which of the following must be even? So we know that n is an integer. And they're saying, which, in the, which of the following must be even? A, n plus 1. Mm, no, because if n was an odd number, or if n were an odd number, then uh, it would be even. But if n were an even number, it would be odd. B says n plus 2. Same logic. Boom. C, 2n. Yes, this is the correct answer. Because anything multiplied by 2 automatically becomes even. Uh, if you don't believe me, let's pick a few random numbers. Uh, 5, or any integer multiplied by 2 at least, becomes an even integer. 5, 7, uh, 1, 4. 5 times 2 is 10, even. 7 times 2, 14, even. 2 times 1, 2, even. 2 times 4, 8, which is also even. Let's look at answer choices D and E and figure out why they're not, uh, why they're not true, or why they're not the answer. Now D says... 2n plus 1. This is would always be odd because 2 times anything would be even, but then if you add 1 to it, it's always going to be odd. So that's why it's not d. And uh, e says n squared. Uh, that's not necessarily true because if n was even, such as 2, 2 squared is going to be 4, and that's even. But if it were an odd number, like 9, 9 squared is 81, and that's odd. So that's why it's not e. So the answer is c. Forty-one says if four is the solution, is one solution, four is one solution of the equation x squared plus three x plus k equals ten. What's where k is the constant? What is the other solution? Uh, first thing we want to do is solve for the k. So let's plug the four in everywhere we see x. So four times four is sixteen plus three times four is 12 plus k equals 10. Add these together and you get 28 plus k equals 10. Subtract 10. And you get 18 plus k equals 0. k equals negative 18. And let's plug that back into the original equation. And uh, if we do that, we get x squared plus 3x minus 18 equals 10, bring the 10 over, and we get x squared plus 3x minus 28 equals 0. Now let's factor this. Something times something gets you 28. 4 times 7. 7 minus 4 is also 3, so we know 7 and 4 are here. 3 is a positive, so the 7 is the bigger number. It gets the positive. x minus 4 equals 0. We set these both equal to 0, and we get x equals negative 7, x equals 4. And they already told you that 4 is one of the solutions, so it's not that. So the other solution is negative 7, and that is answer choice A. 42. Oh, this one's interesting. It says, if A, B, C, D equal AD minus BC, then what is 3, negative 2, 5, 4? I think it's important to, to point out that this does not mean uh, absolute value. Sometimes the GMAT will have these fun little symbols that they throw in here, and you have to figure out what the gimmick is. In this case, it's AD minus BC, and uh, you have to apply it to a completely uh, other unrelated set of uh, set of problems. So what we want to do here is we want to pretend that the a is the 3, the b is the 5, uh, yeah, the b is the 5, the c is the negative 2, and the d is the 4, and just plug it in into this equation here. So 3 is the a, so you get 3 times d, which is 4, minus 
b, which is 5, times c, which is negative 2. That gets you 12. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. 12 times 10, or sorry, 12 minus negative 10 is 12 plus 10, and that is 22. And 22 is answer choice E. All right, next up we have number 43. Number 43 says the sum of 7 eighths plus 1 ninth is between what? Well, let's figure this out first. 9 times 8 is 72. 63 plus 8. That gets you 71 over 72. Now, this number is very close to 72 over 72, which is 1. So we know that the answer is going to be something between 1 and something smaller than 1. So the, the answer is going to be somewhere here. Let's look at the answer choices. Okay, answer choice. A says 1 half and 3 fourths. Nah, I think that's a little bit too small. B says 3 fourths and 1. Ah, I think we have our answer. Because 3 fourths is smaller than 1, and the other, the upper limit is the 1. And 71 over 72 is definitely between these two numbers. So the answer choice is going to be B. All right. And uh, I think that's all the room I have, and I'll see you in the next video.